Uh, good morning, guys. Um, I know you guys are all tired, but thank you for coming. Uh, so today we're going to be discussing about AI. And I guess uh, my name is Andy. I'll just do a quick introduction for myself. Uh, I work at IQWiki, which is the largest uh, in blockchain and crypto encyclopedia. And you know we've been working with AI to create different um, AI products to share knowledge. And our mission is to kind of knowledge, uh, share our knowledge, and kind of scale up the space with providing more educational, uh, you know, pages and etc. For everything about crypto and blockchain. Um, so to get started, I guess we can start with you and go down the line to kind of get an introduction of who you are, how you guys started, you know, what you guys do. Sure. Good morning, guys. Uh, my name is Han. I'm the founder and CEO of Blue Whale AI. Um, we are building a decentralized AI um, the personalization protocol on the blockchain so that you can scale any kinds of like AI models um, on the blockchain data itself. Um, we have been around for quite some time, um, focused, you know, my previous companies on AI and Web2. And I have to admit, you know, Web2 and AI is super broken. And that's why I decided to go to Web3 round. Uh, hi. Um, my name is Ethan, and I'm a developer at um, Numbers Protocol. Um, Numbers Protocol is an open source decentralized content network, and um, we offer content provenance solutions for yeah, every type of digital content. So yeah, thanks for having me here. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. I'm Kathy. Uh, I have been a long time as a data scientist, and I started working at C uh, on CK Research around the same time where uh, another team has coined the term ZKML, Zero Knowledge Machine Learning. Um, so that's like right down my alley. So I started doing a lot of like intersection with ZK and AI. Uh, hi, I'm Jan from Filecoin Foundation. Um, I'm an enterprise solutions architect there. And uh, I mainly do data onboarding onto our network. Uh, there are some data sets in the pipeline that we're going to apply machine learning to. Uh, previously, I was a um, applied data scientist at a consulting firm. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Uh, so if you guys are actually developers here, you guys are really in for a treat because everyone here is very technically, like, you know, they're all, they're all developers. Um, so uh, I guess the second question that I wanted to ask is we... AI existed for quite a long time, and the idea of it, but I feel like the emergence of AI and the intersection between AI and blockchain has emerged vastly over the course of like the past year or so. Um, so if you can share like your journey through that, and if you can share what your thoughts on the current status of that intersection between AI and blockchain is, that would be great. Should I start? I take, okay. I take the first one. Um, so working in AI and Web2 in the last coming years, uh, we noticed there are two really big bottlenecks. Uh, one of them is you're spending a lot of money to acquire data, what you can train on, and then you're spending a lot of money to do computing. Now, from a, a company perspective, that doesn't look good for you because on the financials, you have a lot of costs, and your company, instead of looking like a software company, looks like a manufacturing company. Now, in Web3, uh, we thought you know, there's a great way using Web3 to solve the problems in Web2. So the data is available, right? It's all on chain. So if you have access to that, if you are able to make that trainable uh, feed into the AI models right away, then you have a huge advantage. The second thing what I believe uh, will happen is that decentralized computing is coming out. Maybe in the last two months, I met like 50 companies that are doing decentralized computing that offer you, uh, you know, like computing of GPUs at 10% of the cost of AWS or GCP. And so, as you can see, two of the most biggest bottlenecks are solved by, you know, like the blockchain. And so, I was a huge believer that um, there will be a huge uh, opportunity to combine AI and Web3 so that you have much more scale for both technologies. Um, just like Andy said, um, AI has been around, but, um, you know, technology typically, like everything else, that we, it operates on trends. So, like... Um, in the last few last year, I guess, like there's been a lot of um, AI development, and um, with that is like a lot of progress. But at the same time, um, there's a lot of you know issues that crop up because like you know technology we of often operates on like innovate first and then ask questions later. So um, you'll see that in the AI space, there's a lot of like uh, provenance, data provenance issues. Um, there's a lot of things where like people are complaining about, you know, their content being or, or or their data being used to train stuff without permission. You know, they say that Mid Journey is just like one large scrape of the internet. 
unpermissioned scrape of the internet. So there's like a lot of these issues. So um, I think it may be too soon to say this, but like we're sort of at like a, I think that we're kind of like at inflection point where like it's kind of like there's a lot of AI development, it's super awesome, but at the same time like we have to be mindful of these issues, otherwise they're all just gonna like come slap us in the face afterwards. So, um, but I think, um, luckily I think we're learning from our mistakes from the past um, tech space. Um, there are a lot of new open standards. So like there's like ERC 7050, uh, 75 or 17 I think, which um, it's like a step in the right direction. It basically, um, it's like a open standard where um, users can you know store their data training permissions on, on chain. So I think blockchain represents like a, blockchain and provenance are very hand in hand because of the immutability and the decentralization. So um, I think, you know, AI and blockchain is, you know, the marriage is, just makes sense. Um, I think um, for the past year that I've been going around and talking about like bringing AI on chain, the most often question we get is why? Why do you want AI on chain? And what I realize is, uh, as Andy said, AI has been around for so long that people don't remember that machine learning and AI is much more than just large language models and stable diffusion, right? Because immediately they're like, why would we want to put GPT on chain? Or why would we want to put stable diffusion on chain? But I'm like, machine learning is way more than that. There are so many algorithms that would be useful for you know, decentralized social media, DeFi. So it's almost like we're rebuilding all the sort of um, very early machine learning frameworks, like all the things that we have done in AI before, and we're sort of re-implementing it in Web3. Um, you know, and, and I think it's progressing like pretty fast. Yeah, I think to be on to what you say, like the convergence is there. Actually, um, in my experience for the past few years, there are some regional banks that are looking at using blockchain or distrib distributed ledger to actually um, uh, enhance their businesses, or at least like have uh, exchange of uh, data across the different business units. Because most of the time, they might not want to work with one another in the enterprise. They might have different agendas. So um, we did experiment with like federated learning. And with federated learning, there is an issue of model poisoning where a business unit can sabotage another business unit. So the blockchain of the immutability there comes very in hand. To, uh, it, it becomes very useful to, to help with that. Yeah. Awesome. So I, hearing what you guys are saying, um, I realize that you guys are talking about unresolved issues and because of the sudden upbringing and the cost of the intersection of AI and blockchain, there has to be some pain points that you guys learned, but there are still unresolved pain points that you guys must have. So I, I just wanted to ask what are some of the main, like, you know, unresolved issues or pain points that you guys have to deal with and how do you guys plan or how do you guys see the industry itself move forward to solve those problems? So on our side, um, the reason why we are building a decentralized personalization protocol is because um, we are not just trying to solve the AI issues that we have, right? The bottleneck that we are seeing with data and computing. We are also trying to solve some of the issues that you have in Web3, right? For example, um, personal what personalization means is being able to feed the right content, the right assets, the right services to the right users so that more transactions happen. And um, we found out that in Web3, that's currently impossible. So it's like, you know, for the best example analogy is like if you're, you know, listening to Spotify and you have to click through 100 music, you know, titles that you don't like until you get to the right one, right? That's how Web3 feels like right now. Now, if you take that to the next level and you say like, you know, all the information should be stored on chain, all the wallets should be on chain, all the transactions, all the behaviors on chain. That means like you are able to train an AI model that does personalization for all the people that are actually landing on chain. Now you're solving a problem for the next wave of adoption, right? The next wave of adoption should be users that are not as technical. They want to get into Web3 because they like entertainment. Um, they want to get into Web3. Maybe they want to make a small buck and, and just have fun and just spend more time there. But right now, like the problem is like we cannot win against the Web2 guys because their personalization is so much better. But in Web3, because of the blockchain, you have a shared common ground of user information where you can train on and then deliver, like even for apps that you are building that some of the developers are building here, from day one, you have TikTok personalization standards or you know, precision and accuracy that nobody else would have acquired or 
being able to do in Web2? Um, so for us, um, we can pretty much only speak from the provenance perspective because that's our focus. But um, you know, provenance is not like like a new issue. Like it exists before, like misinformation or like just you see on a, you see a photo and you don't know like at face value like who created it, or what the license is. Um, I think AI just kind of makes the issue more apparent because this we go from not caring to caring like, hey, is this actually human created? Is this um, AI created? Or what is what I'm seeing like true or not? Is it created by a computer? So um, from numbers protocols perspective, like what we're doing is um, we're just offering people a way to um, be able to tell like what they're seeing is um, AI generated or not. And it extends further to like things like licensing and also like AI training permissions and stuff like that because um, yeah, as I mentioned um, earlier, like um, everything on the web, it's not like free for you to use. There are permissions and um, the blockchain is a great way for um, these things to be transparent, made transparent to us and um, you know, yeah. I would totally add to that because it gets really dangerous when AI becomes better in creating content that's fake and you guys make sure using the blockchain that they are actually verified. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, I think, um, and we're, so the question was pain point, right? And I think one of the major pain point um, is to put AI on chain, most of the time we want it to be verifiable. And in order to be, for it to be verifiable, one of the current solution is ZK. Uh, but to add ZK on top of any computation, uh, especially machine learning, is easily at least 100 times, if not 1,000 times more expensive, like both in terms of computation and uh, time cost. So I think that's also one thing um, where, like, so the question becomes like, what are the use cases right now that absolutely will be worth it, even if there is such an overhead? And what are the use cases where user would not be willing to pay that you know, extra cost um, to cover um, just because it's verifiable or trustless? Um, yeah, so I think it's probably the biggest pain point um, in, in the space of like ZKML. Yeah, I think adding on to the technical portion of it, like uh, applying machine learning on encrypted data also is, uh, is an issue as well. Uh, right now, homomorphic encryption is not as advanced as we would like it to be. So the precision and accuracy of training a model on encrypted data is still somewhat limited. But I think as, the, um, as it progresses, uh, there will be more machine learning being applied on chain at a cheaper rate and a more efficient cost. Yep. Awesome. So, um, what what do you guys think the next flywheel is, is for for um, AI? Like, what what is the end game for your you guys personally as like your project, or how do you see AI and blockchain again? Like the end game. Do you guys have like a vision for that specifically? I mean, that's uh, that's a very broad question and hard, uh, tough to answer. But um, I will just take a stab at it. I I believe that Web three should be uh, much more dominant in the space in the way how the internet is being used. Um, right now we see majority of the users still going to Web2. Um, so the end game is like how can we impact billions of people in this world uh, with blockchain technology but also with AI technology at the same time. Now uh, coming back to the problem that we are trying to solve is like we want to generate the next wave, right? The, the bull run is hopefully coming very soon. Um, the next Bitcoin halving is next year. And um, as we saw in the last bull run, a lot of normal users or normal you know, consumers came because of NFTs and all those kind of entertainment gaming uh, kind of applications. And I think that's just going to get stronger. We're going to have more mass adoption. And that mass adoption needs to come in into this space, but not being distracted by technical challenges, um, bad user experience, or you know, even need to figure out how to use a system um, with wallets or logging in or whatever, right? So I think there are a lot of startups that are solving those kind of problems. Now, um, we, like in, in our belief is ChatGPT only became successful is not because uh, large language models uh, have not been around or they reinvented it, it's because they built an incredible user-friendly UI and UX. And I think that's what Web3 needs. Um, that's what Web3 and AI needs, right? And that's what we are, uh, you know, uh, that's our end game. If we can create the most personalized experience uh, 
in every dApp that is sitting on, on the blockchain in Web3, then we will be able to adopt the next billion users that come into this space. And that's what Blue Whale focuses on. Um, so for us, we see blockchain as kind of like um, an extension of AI um, and a way for um, good AI practice. It promotes good AI practices pretty much. And um, the reason for this is, um, again, I'm speaking from the provenance perspective because this is like what we do. But, um, you know, from the training part of it, um, AI models train on um, data and uh, we need to know what data is trustworthy because the model is only good as is only as good as as um, the data is and um, Again like feels like I'm repeating myself, but <laughs> uh, the uh, The models also need to be trained on permission data and then from an output perspective like we want to be able to answer questions like um, you know was this generated by AI? You know, what data went into it? What model was used, et cetera? So um, there's a lot of good progress in this area already, I think, because I, I think people care about this. Um, there's enough, like, I think um, sometimes, like, Web3 is hard for the normal person to understand, but, like, part of the reason why, like, stable diffusion is really, like, popular is because anybody can see an image and be like, wow, that's amazing, right? It's really, um, it's really like accessible so um i think like um integrating blockchain into just ai pipelines existing ai pipelines not necessarily like um decentralized ai or anything like that but like me just integrating it as part of like a step is kind of like a way for um you know people to benefit from the best of blockchain, which is just the decentralization, the immutability, the transparency, and the verifiability. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just add on to that um, from a more technical perspective as well. Uh, I think one of the, I think the next big thing in uh, machine learning um, and the convergence of machine learning and blockchain uh, is, is going to be really soon. And it's actually, it might start from Taiwan as well. Once the 2NM chip is out, uh, there might be enhanced ability to do edge inferencing or at least a 15% higher capability to do edge inferencing. Uh, most of the machine learning models or a lot of uh, machine learning right now uh, in use cases that are for real world purposes are mostly on the edge. So I can see um, the hardware part coming about there. LLM is also very limited. So it's kind of like you have like a huge data set and you're trying to overfit the model on a huge data set. It tells you what you want to know through the data set itself. So it's only limited to that corpus or that, that data set. You can't really scale it. So um, right now, GPT-4 or the next iteration of GPT-4, they're trying to add this additional layer um, and they're trying to add more reinforcement learning onto the LM itself uh, for general planning purposes. So for machine learning to go to like the next level, it needs to be able to learn properly. So right now, um, it's nowhere near human intelligence or even like even a cat is probably like smarter than the, the machine learning um, model itself. It's, it's quite primitive. So, um, yeah, and the blockchain layer, the final part of it, which is the blockchain layer, will add it to the immutability, uh, like what you guys mentioned. The feature sets that are used to train the model are very important. Uh, they can be abused as well. So, um, yeah, all these will come hand in hand pretty soon, maybe for the next four to five years, uh, in four or five years' time. Yeah. Um. Yeah, no, I totally agree with, I guess, the prospect of the next four to five years. But when I think about end game, actually, I think I'm thinking of like in the very far future. But essentially, what I hope to see is that for every sort of Web2 service that we are using right now, there is a decentralized or trustless alternative uh, at a reasonable cost uh, so that it's not like an expectation that everyone is going to move from Web2 to Web3, but then there is always that option there uh, whenever people want that security or want that trustlessness. Um, so yeah, so that's sort of my vision of the end game. So I actually think um, I want people to move from Web2 to Web3 because, um, you know, uh, we, we mentioned about provenance, and um, I can imagine a world where AI is so strong that we will have 50% of the things we see online is fake. And how are we going to differentiate that? How, how do we know 
if this news is fake or if this is real. And there's really no way in Web2 to verify that. Awesome. Um, one, one, I guess, funny question is that, what, is there anything in the AI space specifically that you guys are very excited about, you know, that, that you guys are paying attention to as a team or personally? Yeah, yeah. so for, for us, um, because our team is like very deeply coming from the AI space and um, kind of moving into Web3, uh, we have been analyzing one certain thing that's happening and there's a huge debate right now. Um, are large language models gonna win or are knowledge graphs gonna win? Are you gonna feed large language models with knowledge graphs or are you gonna stack la large language models on top of knowledge graphs? And so uh, right now our bet and this is basically what we are building, right? Like um, a decentralized personalization protocol is literally building a knowledge graph on top of blockchains. So you're aggregating data in, in a vector format um, and having AI models access it. But the thing is like, if, if the argument is right that large language models are gonna win, that means in the future they're gonna eat the knowledge graphs inside. So we should be betting on large language models. Anyway, there's no answer, so I'm not here to, to tell you what's right or wrong, but um, that's probably the biggest debate that's going on in AI right now. Oh, I add on to that. Uh, I do have an opinion on that. Uh, okay. I, I think that <laughs> knowledge graph will be built, uh, will be like a data source for the LLM and state. Uh, there are research people on neuro-symbolic uh, LLMs that's coming out where they try to classify and break it down into smaller classes. It's part of the planning paradigm. So. I think there, there is something there, and it'll be quite exciting to see what develops in, in your company for the, the next uh, few years as well. So, so you're also betting on knowledge graphs? Uh, yeah, as, as, as part of Great, the, yeah, awesome, yeah, and we have another one in our camp. <laughs> uh, so I think both uh, Han and Ethan mentioned about like authentic content and how do you prove that you know, these images or videos are not from an AI. So it's sort of a small toy project that I've been working on, which is uh, there are uh, recently, recently there are consumer cameras that has a secure element that can sign the pictures that was taken from a camera. So it's just sort of like your uh, hardware wallet, except for cameras. Um, but you cannot stop people from taking a picture of a picture, right? So I can still generate AI, AI generated image and then use the camera to take it. So that's where M uh, machine learning will come in very handy. So I always say that like the current cryptography that we have already proves like a lot of the sort of um, integrity or the entirety of the data, but machine learning can prove the what uh, in the data, like the, the content of the data. So in this case, you can use machine learning, which is like a very, um, um, well-known class of algorithms called image recapture detection. So along with that, machine learning sort of proved that this picture is not recaptured. And then with the signature from the camera, together, then that creates an entire proof of like, uh, this picture is authentic. But what I want to add to you, and what you guys are working on is so fascinating because you're trying to enable AI with the ZK layer. And I think that will give power back to the consumers, right? For example, right now, if we're on Facebook, Instagram, on all kinds of like social media platforms, we are literally being exploited for our data. Our data is being sold to other people. And um, your data will be sit sitting on the blockchain in the future as well. And with a MLZK layer, you can literally just hide the information of each consumer, but give them the permission to monetize it and give them the power that they own their own data instead of being exploited by the big companies in Web2. Yep, exactly. Um, I think they covered it all, so. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, since we have a bit more time, I guess I have one last final question that could be a bit more fun. Uh, it's gonna be a very tough question for you. Um, if you had to pick between AI or Web3, just one, which one would it be and why? Wow, that's, uh, that's a tough one. So, um, <laughs> uh, picking it based on hype or picking it based on long-term future? I, I, I don't believe in a future where there's uh, you know, either or, to be honest. Um, that's why it's so hard to pick. But if I'm a developer right now, I probably would start with AI first and then add a blockchain into it because it's too easy to build Web3 and then add AI with ChatGPT under the hood. Um, I would not recommend any developer to do that because 
it just makes your company sound very hyped, right? But from a, you know, like if you think of it this way, right? If you're going, you know, to build your application and you are looking for funding and um, you are going to in front of investors and you have built a great stack of technology, um, you should reflect very deeply on the structure, the stack uh, of how you're building AI so that you can actually leverage the power of blockchain to it you know, kind of like improve the entire system. That's, that's where I'm coming from. So my guess is like, okay, start with AI, add blockchain in it, and improve the entire back to end-to-end -end experience and uh, the processing, the learning, the data, uh, the ZK layer, you know, like everybody who is sitting here um, plays a really strong role in the AI process for me. And so, sorry guys, I gotta choose AI. Oh, man. <laughs> um, well, I work in the Web3 space, so, I mean, but, okay, um, but in all seriousness, I think that um, Web3 is definitely more difficult to develop for because things just aren't straightforward. Um, but at the same time, it's underexplored, so there's a lot of, like, room for growth and um, if you're the type of person who likes you know to think outside the box then I think maybe web3 might be for you yeah but you can't deny the excitement of AI <laughs> um, okay uh, I guess personally I would choose AI um, because a lot of the work that I do actually deals a lot with the mathematics and the like a very underlying mechanism or architecture of machine learning models and stuff. So it definitely took time, it takes time to like be in the industry and ha having implemented a lot of models to know about all those. Uh, but for general developers, I think it, it depends on what kind of applications that they want to build, right? Because nowadays there are like hugging phase and a lot of other like open source model um, provider so you're, you're not really like building off model yourself or you know, trying to implement it in ZK. I don't really think that you, like, you can just use AI, right? Without really like having worked in AI or, uh, uh, or learn AI. So I, I think that's, um, yeah, depends on what you want to be. But personally, I would choose AI. Um, I would choose AI as well. Uh, I came into this space because of AI research. Uh, on autonomous vehicles where vehicles need to talk to vehicles. So generally it's like a multi-agent reinforcement learning paradigm where now you need to ensure that the vehicle communicating with another vehicle doesn't get sabotaged. And the only way to do that, or at least uh, a good way to do that is through a distributed ledger to ensure that no one tr attempts to sabotage uh, an autonomous fleet moving from one place to another. So I'm in this space um, exploring what blockchain can do for machine learning, but um, at the core of it, I'm still uh, a machine learning uh, guy. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, to just uh, last comment, I, I think there's no future where both of them won't work together. Yeah. And right now, I feel like um, AI and Web3 have two camps, right? You have the developers that are very proud that they're doing AI, and then you have developers that are very proud they're doing Web3 and uh, they don't want to work together. And so I'm running a company where I have both, <laughs> and I have to convince them to be friends. And so I hope, you know, like, m my hope for the entire industry is that more developers will be more open-minded about what the other technology can do for each other and how the other technology can solve the problems. And I, I hope, you know, everybody in the audience that is maybe working on an AI project or working on a Web3 project, that you keep your mind open to what the other technology can help you excel, right? Uh, what, what it can do for the industry and what it can do for your product without necessarily judging on, you know, like, is it either or? Awesome. Uh, thank you guys so much for your insight and thank you guys. Uh, there's a lot of great um, panels moving forward, so please stay tuned. And yeah, thanks guys. Thank you guys. Thank thanks. you.